I'm Dan. I'm Leon. Cheers. I'm Liam. We recorded the new album um, in our hometown of Brighton. We've got a studio, or a couple of studios that we work out of. Um, it's not much, but it's a home for our gear and equipment. And uh, yeah, that was the, the place that we made Spirit in the System. Well, the new album is called Spirit in the System for a reason. It's, uh, it's kind of an emotional journey. We asked all the singers to, to give us something about how they feel. Um, we got a, like a varied set of responses from that. But the idea really was just to put more of everything that we do into it. Like more drum and bass, more dance music, more rock music. Um, you know, more suitable for the clubs and more suitable for the stage, really. Uh, so it's just an evolution on, on what we do. So we've done a lot of collaborations on this record, uh, namely the first track in the album which features Enter Shikari. Um, we've been kind of good friends with them as well as uh, peers for a while, having toured with them this year. Um, it was really, really great experience to get them in the studio with us. They were quite new to the whole collaboration thing with dance producers. Um, we had Rory and Rao down for a day and, and it, was, it was a really good thing to be able to work on vocals as well as uh, working on guitar, um, which we did quite a bit of. Other collaborations on the record, we've got uh, Rob who sings in a band called The Automatic. Uh, yeah, Jenna G, who we've worked with several times before. Um, and also a girl called Chantel from a band called Invasion, who are quite a big up and coming kind of death metal band. Wizard Rock. Wizard, yeah, Wizard Rock as they describe it. Um, she's got this really like powerful, kind of soulful voice as well, which um, really works on Fading Halo and uh, another track, Life's Too Short. So quite, uh, we've got quite a lot of collabs as well as the. Who else got Max Star, who is. Uh, who's well known for me from East London. Up and coming grime superstar. Um, and from uh, our hometown of Brighton, we've got uh, MCID, who's uh, he's in Brighton less and less these days, all out around the world with sub focus, and um, he's done all sorts of stuff, you know, with Pendulum and uh, with uh, Chaser Status as well, so we're quite lucky to, to get a moment to get him in the studio. Um, also, yeah, and some other vocalists who are sort of, you know, less well known, um, but up and coming. Uh, Matt Rose and Bruno Belanta. Um, yeah, a, a lot of collaborations on this album. Like, we just really wanted to hit the vocals thing hard and, um, and, in and a way get we, two vocalists on the tracks in some yeah, places. But it we didn't chase well. the kind of, the mic patterns of this world this time to try and get that kind of thing. We actually wanted to, almost more vocals than we could handle. We wanted a lot of choice and we're quite happy to work with anyone that was talented. Yeah, there was a lot of good stuff going on while we were in the studio making that album. Um, in terms of dance music you had like sub focus and chase and status just sort of bringing things out. Um, and in terms of rock music bands like uh, Dead Weather and Enter Shikari and um, even Kings of Leon uh, when they released that last album it's just like the sounds that they're getting suddenly made things really exciting <laughs> for us in terms of in terms of what we do you know that sort of whole question is that a guitar I'm listening to where you just don't know a lot of the time you just got these heavy sounds or things mixed with synths so for us we had the inspiration for the whole album um, just, just came from, from listening and not, not being in one scene or the other, but, but being in several at the same time. And that's, that's really what we want to try and get across in our music, is that we didn't just come from one place. Like, people say, which scene did you come from? It's like, we, we really did embrace all scenes growing up. Um, we are very much into live music, and we were very much into clubbing and um, drum and bass in a big way. Um, but not just drum and bass in the clubs, you know. So. Inspiration kind of comes from comes from other people and pushing things forward, and the, the desire to push things forward. Uh, lyrically, lyrically, each song has its own its own meaning. Um, we were talking a lot when Rao was recording "Take It Back" about um, about.
about sort of the end of the world and the, the way that the world's all being pushed a bit too far and spread a bit too thin. Uh, and I think that came across on a kind of fast-moving, aggressive track. I mean, on the on the whole, it was it was emotional. It was the, we were trying to get emotions kind of out of the singers. We didn't give them a storyline. We helped with a lot of the lyrics, perhaps, on this album, which was different from the last. Mm. We were actually involved lyrically with this, but it was important that there was a kind of emotional response from the singer that, and that we tried to get that across in, in, in the overall finished product of the song and that's a thing that runs throughout the whole record actually we wanted to make it a bit deeper a bit more song oriented a bit more spirited you might say yeah yeah spirit but exactly. also involving a system yes be it a computer <laughs> system or in fact spirit in the system is taken from um, the title of uh, Framer's book, A Ghost in the Machine, is one of the reasons that we liked it, which is uh, a description of how your mind and your body may be separate, like you've just got this uh, consciousness that's sitting in this machine, when your body dies, maybe that consciousness goes somewhere else. So, uh, it, which was supposedly um, a false idea, and when, and so, you know, uh, the, the, the famous description of that was that a ghost in the machine was like uh, taking the piss a little bit out of out of that that spiritual idea. But I kind of like it. I think maybe it's uh, maybe there's something to that. Um, so spirit in the system, yeah, works on many levels when we decided on that name. I mean, it's it, it's always a difficult question when someone asks where your inspiration came from, and I think at the end of the day, it, it comes from everywhere and anything that you want it to come from. It's, the world is here and you take what you will from it and it's, you know, it, it, it sounds a bit cliched I imagine but it literally does come from this inspiration. Yes, yes. definitely a source <laughs> of inspiration. <laughs> I think this album, Spirit in the System, is is more eclectic than the, the Join the Queue album, the first record. In so much that maybe we're a bit more eclectic in, and a bit braver in terms of including kind of more more kind of subgenres of, of dance music and the things that we were hearing, and people were playing to us, and you know, kind of other things have come on board since then. The whole dubstep scene and, and that kind of thing has been important to dance music in this country and, and to ignore that or not embrace it would, would have been a bit of a miss for us and we wanted to evolve the sound that we had before which for us meant incorporating better two different sides of our personality like we are making rock music but for clubs um, or Another way of looking at it is that we're making dance music which is meant to be performed on stage. So that is eclectic by just its very nature. Um, the thing is there's, there's so, many, so many things colliding around in the music industry at the moment that um, it's becoming much more natural to do that. So I think what used to be looked at as eclectic now is just looked at as it's music. As it's music, normal, yeah. yeah. It's just, you just call it music. There are no rules, otherwise it wouldn't be art. So you know, you go you go clubbing now, and you go to different nights, and and it's often a multi-genre night. Yeah. You know, it will cover a lot of different bases, which is great. And and a lot of the the sort of general public buying that music don't differentiate. They they they're totally accepting of it, which is nice to see because it's something we saw in Japan. A while ago, and they've 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 had that mentality for some time to embrace all sorts of different stuff at once. And we've had that mentality for yeah. quite some time. You yeah. know, we never really saw it any other way. Um, that you have to belong to one scene or another. No, you know what? They, they go on about this second album syndrome. Like, did you find the second album more difficult to write than the first one? I don't think we did. Uh, I mean, it, 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 was, it would be difficult to. The first one took three years. On, the, on a lot of levels, it was it was a lot, a much easier process. Really, we learned so much from making one record that we had a million ideas to make a second. Yeah, we just it, it just flowed straight in. Really, after we'd spent three years making the first one, and it wasn't like we spent three years 
knowing what we were doing actually on that first record. We spent three years because we didn't know what we were doing. It was only the last sort of part of that that, that became uh, what people hear on the record. So then we just had like an overflow of, of things to do in the studio um, that we, we ran straight into with the second album and it just worked really well the whole way through. Yeah. We had a wealth of experience to draw on. That surely, if, you know, if you're thinking, you should make it a bit easier. Yeah. Plus a lot more people had heard us by that point, so maybe it was easier to get people involved and that's why we ended up working so with, yeah. with so many people on this one. I think the feedback we got from the first record, actually some people get, some artists say, well, if they've had a reasonably successful first album, it gives them the fear to make the second one. I don't think we see it like that. We actually, it gave us more confidence to make the second one. I think as well, you, you know, you think about, like you said, the, the, the second album thing about, I mean, obviously that's there in your mind and you know it's your second album and you know that people have heard your first album and they're expecting a certain thing or a certain sound and but I think you've just got to be really careful not to kind of think too hard about it and do what we've done, which is just carry on working as we, the only way we know how and keep making music the only way we know how and, you know, if that's different to what people are expecting then we really don't care, to be honest. You know, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, we made the record we wanted to make at the end of the day. That's all we'll ever do. Yeah. The the artwork um, on Spirit in the System was uh, it's this kind of skeleton guy. This um, this angel of death. We call it. Uh, it's a skeleton with wings. It's. It's interesting in a way, I mean the way I think of it now is that people are always scared of the unknown and that applies pretty well to the chemists because um, our music is a little bit unknown, it's a little bit unusual, people find it very hard to define and sometimes that scares them off because they're like, oh hang on a minute, is this drum and bass, is this dance music, is this rock music, oh I'm not sure and they, uh, people, people find it hard to define and so they worry about it a bit and for me that kind of relates back to uh, the whole death thing like that's the ultimate fear of the unknown isn't it people are afraid to die because we don't know what's going to happen so maybe our music's a bit like that that's how I'm looking at that front cover at the moment we then got the cover painted by um, one of the greatest comic book artists of all time or cover artists of all time I should say Glenn Fabry um, who's painted all, all sorts of things he's painted Batman and preacher Judge Dredd and, and Preacher is one of the most amazing ones that he did and um, yeah we, we were lucky to get a hold of him and get him to paint that thing because that's, that's what he does best and he really makes covers like jump out at you and it's quite an unusual image for a, especially for a dance album we don't deny that but um, we wanted to just kind of be really plain and bold about it more like a rock fun cover might do so uh, that's what we did and there's, there's several different versions of it and we've actually got the, the painting hanging in our studio in Brighton um, and it, it's, it's just yeah beautiful, couldn't have been more pleased with how it came out.